Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and this is part 5 of our API and database testing with SpecFlow and C Sharp. And in this part, we'll be talking about working with SpecFlow test for WCF API. And this video is actually a continuation of a previous video, which is part 4. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 4 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so for that, let's flip to Visual Studio. So guys, in our previous video, which is nothing but part four, we were discussing how to work with the spec flow and how to consume that web service that we have, the PF service client, and then use it in a spec flow step definition, and also try to run the test from the spec flow scenarios, right? And right now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna add a little more complexity because in our previous video, we just worked with only one data of a table, or if we will have like two or three datas, then how to work with that. So remember in our SpecFlow video series of Execute Automation channel, this one, the BDD and SpecFlow, we actually have uh, a lot of details on how to work with the different kinds of tables and dynamic tables and all those stuffs. Maybe uh, if you watch those videos from Execute Automation YouTube channel, then you will have a clear understanding of what this video is talking about. All right, so I have already written some of these scenarios as usual for saving some time. So I'm basically just gonna copy paste this code and you can see that I have added uh, one more scenario, which is nothing but I check employer contribution for the employees. So what is this? Again, in our previous uh, scenario, we wrote I check employee contribution for the employees and this is I check employer contribution for the employees so it's completely different so this step definition is not yet implemented so we have to somehow implement this so it will ask me whether you want to generate a new step definition of course no because again for the sake of time I have already created some of the codes for all these step definition. It's not very uh, very hard because uh, it's pretty much the same thing that we were uh, looking uh, in our previous videos. But here there is some additional information. I will just walk you through what those informations are. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna just copy paste the code right like this, right? So it, let's expand this uh, code window a little bit and see what is this. So if you see here, what I'm doing is, uh, since this is going to be iterating into two datas uh, within a table, you can see that uh, we have a create dynamic set instead of create dynamic instance this time. And I'm using an I enumerable of the dynamics and within this I enumerable of the dynamic, I'm just trying to uh, iterate using the for each loop here. And uh, what I'm doing is like exactly the same thing, uh, get employee uh, contribution so far with ID. So this is the ID and for a single data and then I'm checking using the assert r equal and if it is true then it is also going to write the console.write line that it is as expected right and exactly the same thing uh, the next sub definition but the only thing is here I'm calling the get pf employer contribution so far so that is the only difference right so let me quickly uh, save this sub definition and if I close this and if I go to my feature file you can see that this step is also implemented it is not in a purple color right now great so I'm gonna save this and quickly if I build this solution you can see that we will have two scenarios this time rather one right so meaning we have fully implemented that and it's still building all right so now we have uh, two scenarios so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly run the selected test so my expectation this time is both of the tests should get passed because I have given the exact uh, value which is going to be the outcome for that and you can see that uh, this time I am also calculating uh, the employer contribution and the expected PF contribution is different so you can see that it is 3456 for Karthik and for Prashant it is 7560. And you can see that the two tests got passed actually. So meaning it is working, right? And if I go to the output, you can see that we will have a, a cool output here. And I will surely show you uh, a different way of reporting uh, from the spec flow in some of the other video series maybe, uh, so that you can uh, actually align that. And you can see like how you can generate a very pretty report. Uh, than the one which you are seeing right now. It's kind of messy, but uh, for long run, this kind of report is not going to really help. So that we'll talk about that as well uh, soon in our Exit Automation channel video series. Right, great. So this is how you can actually work with uh, different scenarios using the spec flow. And now you will have a question. 
what if this is a kind of trick maybe if I change this value to 5183 and if I save it and if I try to run the employee EPF contribution so far and this is the employee EPF contribution right so if I execute this uh, you will uh, notice one kind of error uh, which is not expected and if you see here it fails saying the 5183 uh, is the expected but the actual is 5184 and uh, if you go to the output you can see that it has only executed for the employee Karthik this time but not for the Prashant why is that both these iterations will be done behind the scenes in the code uh, only if both are true so if any one of them fails then the iteration stops let's say if you have like 10 different datas if the first data itself fails then the rest of nine datas will not be executed so it is always a good practice that you use scenario outline and examples I think the scenario outline and example is already discussed in our execute automation video channel so if you see here the part 8 there is something called scenario outline and this video actually demonstrate how to work with uh, multiple data using scenario outlines and examples right so if you change this to scenario outline and example this kind of situation is not going to happen right so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day